Well, happy Sunday, folks. It's the Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here on the 30th of June here, Sunday, a little day late, uh, right in the middle of 2024. So half of the years in the history books, and we have, have to go. Uh, we have a long way to go in this hurricane season. This is a very fast start to the 2024 season, as expected, to have the first Cat 4 is unprecedented. We've uh, It's a record, uh, most in about 173 years, to have a Cat 4 system barrel uh, out there barreling toward uh, the Windward Islands, uh, St. Vincent here Monday, and then toward Jamaica midweek, and maybe even toward Texas by uh, late, late this weekend into early next week. Um, so, again, barrel something we watch watching behind it. We've got Chris, which has got about a 70-80% chance to develop as well and probably take a very similar track. So, uh, potentially a devastating uh, system here as it goes through the Windward Islands. Again, it's a major Cat 4 hurricane. Again, haven't had that uh, this early in the season as it uh, plows Let's hope this track stays just a hair to the south of Jamaica, but that still puts it in the right front quadrant. You never want to be in the right front of, of these systems because that's where the, the movement and the winds are the strongest. Tidal surge, every storm surge is the strongest. Um, so again, uncertainty as you get beyond later this week, again, that expands here. And again, a lot of the models here you'll see uh, left there show a, a recurvature and again heading toward the, the north the central gulf. So we'll see. Again, a long way out there, but um, if you're in Texas, um, it's kind of one of our high threat areas. You definitely want to keep an eye on Burl. Behind him, we got um, uh, what probably be Chris, number three. Which probably the next system will be, uh, again, the most likely to develop. There's another system uh, down in the off Mexico here. That's probably just going to run out of time here. Uh, about 50-50% chance that it could get named. If it does, it would be named potentially Debbie. Um, all of this despite, uh, the end, a lot of um, concern about the dust, uh, concern or benefit. Um, Sahara dust is an inhibiting factor. Uh, again, it doesn't allow for condensation and storm development. But uh, despite that, we've got one of the strongest hurricanes, uh, the strongest, uh, this early in the season. So, again, dust did nothing to uh, prohibit the development of Burl and Chris behind it. Um, so, again, it's just one factor that can play a role. But obviously, the great heat content of the near record warm ocean temperatures and the no wind shear due to La Nina developing. So, again, just very favorable conditions, again, despite this dust that came off Africa. The big Bermuda high pressure ridge in the, the middle of the Atlantic is shifting a bit. Again, this in part is why we've got more of this deep south uh, kind of Caribbean track, again, versus, you know, south of all the islands, uh, Puerto Rico, Cuba, as opposed to the northern part of that. So this high is kind of blocking the, the southeast U.S. for now. Again, that's why the Texas Gulf Coast uh, region is, is more of a threat here under this current pattern. And this is what we warned our clients, again, last fall and then officially here in early March, that, uh, again, see all that red area across the islands? Again, it was going to be a deep south track favoring our number one spot was Texas uh, for landfalls this year and uh, south Florida. Maybe some threat, obviously, to the Carolina coast as well. So, again, a very active. We're projecting the top three most active in 174 years, and we're certainly off the races on that regard. We'd also projected again last fall for some of our insurance clients that uh, this uh, severe weather season, just because of La Nina and the Tonga volcano and all the moisture that was pumped up in the atmosphere, that this uh, tornado season would be the worst in 13 years, and it's the worst in 13 years, top 8% of history. We added another 50 tornadoes, 208 hail events, 111, um, uh, 1,111 wind events, so a lot of wind damage <clears throat> across the U.S. here this past week. I even had some here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It was some crazy winds uh, right outside our building here uh, last week with a severe thunderstorm. So, again, um, severe weather threat continues, unfortunately, for the East Coast, uh, Southern Midwest, and then shifting back into the Plains Midwest as we go into early in the week. So, again, um, a little bit unusual to have the activity this um, widespread and still, uh, again, adding a lot of numbers here to these uh, tornado hail wind events uh, in July, but uh, that we're doing. Again, La Nina is just simply the cooling of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. We've gone from a strong El Nino last year. Now we're rapidly cooling in the equatorial Pacific here. So these temperatures were versus last year. Now these are versus average. But uh, again, that cool blob is having, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's enough to change the world's circulation weather patterns and create active hurricane season and all the severe weather we're having here in the U.S. So again, minor changes, what perceived to be minor changes in the equatorial Pacific are having a pretty profound impact on our weather. Now, all indications models left here, we're definitely for a moderate La Nina, maybe strong La Nina uh, as we get into the fall here, and then potentially weakening. This doesn't look like to be a three-year event like the last one. Uh, again, so it might be a short-lived event here, but um, again, certainly will play a role here this hurricane season and the winter ahead here, which definitely has inklings of being colder. Last week, World Summary here, ending yesterday, 29 June here in the U.S., it was uh, 2.3 warmer than last year, number one hottest in 39 years, so much above average. Kind of a tale of two halves, though. Again, the, the northern tier of the U.S. Uh, dramatically cooled down after the heat wave a week ago. Uh, so, again, much cooler across the north and uh, very, very hot in the southwest. 
Twelve percent wetter than last year. Wettest in three years. Fourteenth wettest in thirty-nine years. So we continue that uh, above-average uh, rainfall trend here. And again, good news is just uh, ample rainfall across the um, U.S. Corn Belt. Uh, corn prices have plummeted to um, I think three dollars and ninety-four some cents. Uh, so plummeting again. Farmers are. What crop they have in the ground is going to uh, potentially be record-breaking here uh, this year, um, despite the heat wave we had last week. Very cool there across Canada. Coolest in seven years, 11th coolest, below average, almost wall-to-wall across uh, Canada. And uh, warmed up a bit in Europe. Again, we're now warmest in five years, third warmest in 39 years. Uh, Maps since it left are the trends versus average. Look at this week again, Independence Day here, kind of in the middle of the week here, but... um, Overall in the U.S., uh, 0.6 cooler than last year, uh, coolest in three years, still 11th warmest in 39 years, but that cool kind of expanded there in the Midwest Great Lakes, uh, interior northeast, and the rainfalls all 6% drier than last year, still 12th wettest and above average, and again, ample of rainfall again across the, the crop growing regions uh, in, the, in the Midwest. Unfortunately, that rainfall will come in the form of thunderstorms, and that uh, means potential, more potential for severe weather. Just keying in on the Independence Fourth of July weekend here, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday here. So max temps, right? Again, so coolish. Uh, Minneapolis has hardly had any 90-degree days here. Again, uh, wholesale change from last year. So very, very cool and wet. Uh, remember how hot and dry you were last year. So what goes up comes down and certainly came down in uh, Minnesota area where it's cool and wet. Um, uh, real hot conditions, scorching hot again. Uh, California up down the wheat west coast. So they'll be baking out west uh, with hot, dry weather. Um, southeast again kind of uh, warm and sticky and stormy uh, but uh, again overall 13 percent wetter than last year wettest in nine years for this fourth of july weekend fourth wettest in 39 years so way above average rainfall here for the again won't be total washouts it'll just be a a lot of thunderstorms again with uh, as you headed to your festivities look at next week here again uh, second week of july ending 13 july um, cooling trend in the midwest uh, looks like it abates a bit we'll see models are having a hard time finding cold weather like this week again it kind of snuck up on us and uh, so again uh, short range models may be struggling a bit uh, with this transitioning pattern uh, suggesting 3.4 warmer than last year number one warmest in 39 years much above average and again that's really due to the western half of the country i um, still pretty steamy and humid uh, along the southeast coast but uh, a much drier week we'll see this might be a little underdone but uh, 50 percent drier than last year third driest in 39 years so much below average precipitation again uh, still stormier along the southeast coast uh, have to watch that that could be kind of a hint of a tropical system maybe chris or something behind chris um, so again something to, to watch here along the southeast u.s coast if we aggregate all these world week two week trends here now through 30 june through 13 july again you see uh, still kind of cool there in central europe uh, cool in the midwest great lakes and again very hot in the western half and uh, precips versus average down left and uh, this is total rainfall and total snowfall Still getting some snowfall up there in Greenland, despite our summer. Uh, again, but again, ample rainfall across the the U.S. growing regions and uh, even into uh, Central Europe. So with that, folks, hope you have a great week, and uh, we will be back here again this time next week. Mm-hmm.